Dear students, now we are going to discuss branch instructions of AT51 microcontroller in detail. Branch instructions are used to change the flow of program by changing the content of program counter. Here the program counter is an important register which is used to fetch the next instruction to be executed. Hence the branch instructions are changing the content of program counter with the new address pointed to your specific task. Okay, it can be either interrupt or subroutine. Okay, there are two types of instructions used in this branch instruction set. One is jump instruction, the next one is call instruction. Jump instruction permanently changes the program flow, but the call instruction temporarily changes the program flow to subroutine program. And it can return back to that main program. Okay. Here the conditions are allowed in jump instructions. But there are no conditions in this call instruction. Okay. Let's start with the jump related instructions. This instruction replaces the content of program counter with new address. That means permanent changes. Okay. New address can be the entire new address. Or the difference between the new address and the program counter. So here the jump instruction is having that address. It can be either a complete new address where we want to transfer the program control or the difference between the program counter and the new address. Okay. So here we need two machine cycles to execute this jump instructions. Next one is unconditional jump. Unconditional means once that instruction is executed, the program flow is transferred to that new address. There is no conditions to be checked. Okay. So based on the range of the jump, we can classify this unconditional jump into three categories. One is short range. Short range means the program control can be transferred within the range of plus 127 to minus 128. Absolute ranges from 000 to 07 FF. That means around 2000 memory locations we can transfer the program control. Long range. Long range means we can transfer the program control to anywhere in that memory location from 0 to 64000. Do you all understand that is called as long range. So the first instruction is JMP. JMP represents unconditional jump. Okay. At A plus DPTR, that means indirect memory addressing mode. So we are going to transfer the program control to the memory location which is stored in that location. A plus DPTR. A means accumulator 8 bit data. DPTR means data pointer 16 bit data. So we are going to add this to contents that will provide the memory location. So we are going to transfer the program control to that memory location. Okay. It is a single byte instruction because it represents only that opcode. Correct. So next one is absolute jump. It can be represented as AJMP address 11. So 11 means it uses 11 bits. Okay. So it transfers the program execution to the 11 bit address which is available within the program memory. The range is up to 2000. It is a 2 byte instruction. 2 byte means there is a data address is given. For example, we can say AJMP here 0, 6 FF. Okay. The data, 11 bit data and then the opcode for this AJMP. So it is a 2 byte instruction. Okay. So the next one is long jump. It can be represented as LJMP 16 bit address. So here we are going to transfer the program control to the given address. Unconditionally anywhere within the range of 64,000 memory locations. It is a 3 byte instruction because 16 bit address. 16 bit means 2 bytes and plus 1 opcode. Okay 3 byte instruction. So the next one is short jump. It can be represented as SJMP with a relative address. So here we can transfer the program control within the range plus 127 to minus 128. Okay. 
it is a two byte instruction because the relative address is a single byte okay one byte for this relative address and one byte for this opcode so two byte instruction next we are going to discuss jump instructions with conditions the first one is j is an address that means jump if accumulator content is equal to zero if all the bits of accumulator are zero then transfer the program control to the specified address given in the instruction otherwise proceed to the next instruction in the main program okay this is a two byte instruction example j is a 00f3h okay so next one is jn is a address Okay, J N is it means if accumulator content is not zero, then jump to the given address. That is the meaning of this. Okay, it is also a two byte instruction. So the next one is J C address. So here jump if the carry flag is set. Okay, that means if the carry flag is equal to one, then jumps to that specified address. That means transfers the control to the specified address. Otherwise, proceed with the next instruction. So then the next one is J N C address. That means jump if the carry flag is not set. Okay. J B bit comma address. That means jump if direct bit is set. The direct bit is nothing but the given bit in the instruction. it is the tested bit okay it should not be modified we are going to check whether the given bit is 1 or 0 if it is set that means 1 then transfer the program control into the given address it is a 3 byte instruction one byte is for this address another byte is for this bit and the third byte is for opcode okay next one is jbc bit comma address that means jump if the direct bit is set and then clear the bit it is similar to that of the previous one so it is going to transfer the program control to the given address if the direct bit is set same as that of the previous one but here in this there is no change in the direct bit but for this we are going to clear the bit after transferring the control to the new address that is very important okay it is also a 3 byte instruction so next one is jnb that means jump if the direct bit is not set simply bit is equal to 0 okay the next one is cjne destination byte comma source byte comma address so this instruction is very very important one which is widely used in 8051 microcontroller okay it is widely used conditional jump that is compare and jump if not equal so we are going to perform two operations here the first one is compare compare the given destination byte and the source byte if both are not equal then transfer the control to the given address okay so compare and jump if not equal that is jump if the destination byte is not equal to source byte it is a 3 byte instruction two machine cycles are required to execute this instruction okay so the next one is djn is a byte comma address that means we are going to decrement the given byte and jump if it is not zero okay we are going to decrement the given byte if it is not equal to 0 then we have to jump into this new address okay it is also a 3 byte instruction two machine cycles are required okay the last one is nop nop means no operation okay so at that time the microcontroller is in idle state So here it is a one byte instruction. The one machine cycle is required to execute this no op signal. Call instruction is used to transfer the program control to subroutine temporarily. Once the specific task is completed, it returns to that main program. Okay. There are two call instructions. One is A call address eleven. That is absolute call. It unconditionally calls the subroutine. which is located at the indicator 
address. So it is going to increment the program counter twice and pushes the 16-bit result onto the stack. Because after completing that subroutine, we have to return to that main program. For that, we can store that address, program counter address into the stack. Okay, that is very important in this call operation. Next one is L call. L call address 16. That is long call, unconditional call to the subroutine. The same procedure has to be followed over here. Okay, so we are going to store the program counter address into stack. Okay, so it can be used at the time of return. So for that we can use the instruction ret. So it returns from the subroutine to main program. At that time it is going to fetch the address from stack and store it into the program counter. That is the function of this return instruction. Here reta is nothing but return from inter. Do you all understand? Let me explain the function of call and return instruction. So consider this is the main program. Okay. So there are instructions. So whenever the call instruction is going to be executed at that time, the program counter is getting incremented by twice. Okay. So then that address is nothing but the next instruction after this call. Okay. So that is the location of this program counter after incrementing twice. So that address is stored in this stack pointer. So we are going to push the next instruction after this call into this stack pointer. Do you all understand? Then we can transfer the program to this new address given in this call instruction. Do you all understand? Yeah. Consider this is the subroutine. There is a program execution. After that, we have to call this return. So when the return instruction is executed, so it is going to fetch the stack pointer value. So for that, it is going to fetch the stack pointer value using pop instruction and decrement the stack pointer. This is given to this program counter. Okay, to continue the next instruction after this call.